Cyber Awareness Training Part 2 or Part 2. If you're French, yes, I took French in college, and that's all I know is do and we. I think that's about it, right? <laughs> so I didn't do well in college. All right, so Cyber Awareness Training Part 2. This is part of our CISSP supplement training that's available. You can get at ReduceCyberRisk.com. Com. And it's a great stuff that's out there. We put this in regards to our CISSP training that I have available for individuals. Um, but even if you're not taking the CISSP, this training is extremely valuable for you uh, if you have any level of responsibility for cybersecurity uh, within your organization. So again, let's move on. Cyber Awareness Training Part 2. Now, we talked about in the first part one, um, how do you talk to people? And there's, you got one-on-one -on -one discussions, you've got webinars and so forth. Well, here's a face, we're going to get into this. So this is face-to-face -face discussions with people. And it comes down to how do you do that? Well, you can do this in a couple different ways. One, you can have lunch and learns in place. You can set those up. Uh, you can actually meet with individuals uh, individually. Uh, what I'd recommend is you kind of look at some sort of lunch and learn is a really good way of doing that. Um, and that way you kind of get a group together. You do it maybe once a month and you do some level of cyber awareness training for people who want to attend. Uh, it does take a lot of coordination and makes a lot of, takes a lot of time to do these things. However, it's a great way to get you one, to build the rapport with people and to help people out. You can also do that when you roll out some training within your environment. Um, if you have some level of training around maybe password vaults, a good example is that uh, you may say instead of having your people store their passwords on a Excel spreadsheet, you do a um, open up a password vault for people and give them the training around how to do that. A good face-to-face -face discussion and lunch and learns are real helpful in that regard. Um, and that's actually something I want to try to do. Want to, I'm not going to try. I want to do at the end of 2019. Um, webinars. There's online options that are available in webinars, and you can go to those and set those up. Those are easy peasy. If you if you have your own business, you can focus on products. There's lead pages and so forth that have that are available for you. But there's lots of online options to set up webinars, um, and so that you just need to find them if they're if you can utilize a free option. Um, the the free options aren't tailored as much, and you may lose some potential information, may be lost. And, but bottom line is, is it allows you to provide some level of training. The other thing about this is that it does provide a some some regulatory requirement checkbox that you may have to go through. So what I say with that is, is that in many cases, if you are a cybersecurity professional and you have some regulatory requirements around it, uh, this will help fill that security awareness training that uh, you may need. Uh, consultations. Now, these you can get paid resources to help you assist you in this process as well. Uh, they provide a wealth of experience, and and they can give you that information that you may need. Uh, you can go ahead and contract them. You can find them on Udemy, or I shouldn't say on Udemy, but on Upwork as well. Uh, so there are paid consultants out there that could provide you the level of expertise and experience that you may want in a specific one-on-one -on -one discussion with your people. Uh, so the consultations is a way to have that happen. Um, but they can be kind of expensive depending upon your need and your desires. Anywhere from 300 to 350 an hour is what I would expect for an individual if uh, worth their salt. Now you can get somebody cheaper than that, maybe 50 bucks to 100 bucks an hour if you just want basic security awareness training uh, you can get them cheaper than that so you just got to look at what is the best solution for your company the high end the three to 350 that that is for a, uh, a CISO a chief information security officer but based on who you're talking to you may if you want some education specifically to your board you may want someone with, I say this loosely because it, I definitely don't fall into this boat, but you may want someone with a little more polish uh, to, to help you out in that regard. Uh, so something just to consider if you're looking at a security consultant. Talked about lunch and learns. These are great for one to many or one to few, one to, to many in some respects, way more than one on one. Um, they are usually in a more intimate setting, such as like a, after lunch, that kind of thing. Uh, and tenant, attendance can be small to very sporadic. So I would recommend that if you do utilize this, you, you look at a way to be able to uh, get people to commit to coming to the lunch and learn. One, it just helps plan for your numbers and it helps to kind of gauge what what kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations you're going to have. Now, it can be hard to plan this engagement, so you need to make sure that you give yourself enough time for it as well. Uh, brochures, pamphlets, and other gee dunk, I like to call them. Uh, these are pro There's pros to this and there's cons to it. So now the pros around the brochures and the pamphlets and the gee dunk, that's a military term I used to use a lot, the gee dunk, it's the stuff you give, give away. Um, it's, I'm sure it's not 
probably military. It's probably something else, but hey, the military just adopted it. Uh, it it's usually a uh, the pros around this. It's a tactile response, which basically means it gives you something in your hand. Your greedy little mitts get something to be put in there that helps fulfill that need that they may have. Uh, that's that's usually good. People, some people like to have something in their hands that, that helps them kind of learn better. Um, and so this can be can be USD, USB sticks, CDs, could be a pamphlet, just a piece of paper, but something that they would actually physically have. Uh, there are incentives. You can put incentives around finding the USB stick. So you play like Easter eggs and you drop these USB sticks around your campus, around your facility. And if people report them to you, uh, they get you, they get to keep the USB stick. You wipe it and give it to them. Uh, there's other USB sticks that are there that have like, and typically what they'll happen is you'll leave these around. They'll have a little program in them that will call home and it'll say, well, hey, you can't, you were, this is part of a security awareness training to unlock it, take it to your security people. Um, so, so something like that, that pe we don't train people to go, hey, a USB stick. And the purpose behind that is to teach them that if you get it, find a USB stick sitting on the ground, don't plug it into your computer, right? That's just a really good example where somebody can say, oh, I'll plug that in. I did that all the time. And people would stick them in their computers, and then I would take over their computer. That's just bad, so don't do that. Um, there's also additional resources for learning uh, that you can find available that's within brochures. I know SANS has got some uh, products that are available for people to use, and but again, many companies out there, some of them can be very expensive, some of them can be very inexpensive. just depends what the quality and how many you want. The cons, these are good production, and uh, good productions are expensive. Bottom line of that. If you want something really good with a high high glossy paper, that's a really good card cardstock. They're expensive. They're not cheap. Um, and in many cases, it lots and lots of waste. Most people will look at this product. They'll think, oh, this is awesome. I love it. And then they'll throw it away. So you just, the marginal benefit really is kind of negligible around the, uh, the products. I will say the USB sticks do work well. Uh, they, that is an expensive option, though, because each of those sticks will end up costing you probably about five bucks a piece, depending upon where you get them from. But that, that can work. Um, we talked about options of professional brochures and pamphlets. You can make your own. Uh, might be a little bit cheaper than actually buying them from someplace else. Uh, USB DVD giveaways. We talked about that. DVDs, not so much anymore. That's most people don't even really use those at that much, but that's a possibility. Another one to think about is a fortune cookie. I've seen this where people will have a fortune cookie and they actually get something they can munch on. Uh, and then inside there is actually a little little piece of paper that says security is your friend or something like that. So to, the goal is to try to drive home some level of information security awareness. Bottom line, when it comes to brochures and heavy, I'm not a huge fan. I really am not. Uh, but it depends on the marketing and the support. If you do have a good marketing team or you, maybe you can do this stuff in-house, you can save yourself some money. And it is another avenue that works well. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. I, I have seen kind of limited results out of it. Other than the USB sticks has been very successful uh, in driving home some awareness. But it can get kind of expensive. Uh, content reviews. Now, it's important to accomplish these at least every couple years to make sure that your content is fresh. Uh, now, this could change because your threats will change on a daily, I mean, on a weekly, sometimes daily basis. But wire frauds, you know, we see a lot of those where social engineering occurs and people are trying to get in the middle of a wire transfer. And so these wire frauds are a new technique. Ransomware is another new technique that you're seeing out there in a routine basis. Well, as all of these things are new, but in the past, it used to be where it was USB drives or CDs. All of the stuff is changing. So you need to update your content at least about once every two years. And it keeps the information fresh and relevant for users. Um, the population also has become better connected with the threat. In the past, it was like, yeah, ho-hum, ho-hum. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I don't understand it. It's too complex. But now that everybody is connected, people understand the vernacular. They understand the lingo uh, for the most part. And so, therefore, it's important that you set up uh, to get it abbre abbreviated every couple of years or content reviewed every couple of years. Uh, to determine the fact of this, you need to really consider what are your metrics and your measures based on your tools that you're using. Um, your click rate, your, on your phishing attacks, all of that stuff, you need to make sure that you determine the effectiveness of it. Um, and this also provides leadership a snapshot into the organization as well. And, and it determines if the actual awareness effective or training is effective. Uh, so you, you really need to look at these different types of metrics because in some cases I've seen click rates that go down, then all of a sudden they spike up. 
and you ask yourself, well, why did they spike up this last go around? Well, if you look at it, your maybe your phishing attack was much more complex and it was harder to, uh, to for people to go through it. Or maybe it teaches you a training gap that you may have right now in place that you need to address. So these are different things that you need to look at as around metrics. Now, I'm going to get into a couple different buckets around teaching and training employees, your family, and so forth. Now, what are you, when we're talking about teaching and training employees, what are you trying to teach and train your employees? Well, are you trying to do the whack-a-mole approach for having users as part of the solution, right? So what I mean by that is, is that if you just go, if you go do a whack-a-mole where Billy Bob goes and does something, you teach that individual, um, that's not good. Or do you go out and teach your individual users and embed, em, embed them into your training as they are part of the solution and not the problem? Uh, I, I've got many conversations that have occurred with leadership and they go, well, yeah, these people, they always click on the links. They just, they're not that, they're not that smart, right? Somebody made that comment once I thought was interesting. Well, these people are very smart. People are super smart, right? The problem is though, is maybe they're one, not taught correctly. Two, maybe the language isn't in a term that they understand. And maybe they just need a little one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I don't mean in a bad way. I mean, in a way that will help them better understand the content. Um, how fast do your employees report a problem? Uh, do they, I like to use the employees as a sensor. And what I mean by that is, is your employees are the ones that are working on a daily basis and they know what's going on. Well, train them to be the sensor. If something doesn't seem right, have them tell you, have them get a hold of you. Now it could be just a fishing expedition and there might not be anything there, but at the end of the day, would you rather have that or would you rather have something in your environment for a long period of time that's sucking all your data back and you could have done something about it? So train them to alert you on things. Um, again, though, this comes back to if they're frightened for losing their jobs, they're not going to alert you on stuff. They're not. They're just going to say they're going to avoid the security person at all costs. So don't you want to avoid the whole losing your job thing? Now that doesn't mean that you can't build that into. Uh, some sort of expectations around the job of going, you know, if you ha see a threat, you are to say something. And then this person constantly clicks on links and is continuously getting infected. Well, then that's a different conversation. But most people don't do that. They really don't. Um, employees are your biggest liability and your most important asset. So again, they will be the first line of defense or they will let the, they'll open the door wide open and let people in. Uh, so this is why it's important that you train your employees. Now, I talk about cyber for families. One thing I want you to consider for your organization, um, and if you see me moving a bit, it's because my dog is with me and he likes to be rubbed. <laughs> he likes to come up and he says, hey, rub me a little bit, dad. Um, so cyber for families, the, the thing I want you to consider around this is teaching your employees uh, to teach their families. Uh, the thing is, is these people go home and if you can teach your employees that how they need to protect them, their families, that's a huge win. It is a big win for you. So you need to train them to protect what is important to them uh, because realistically, your company isn't. They, they provides a paycheck to them, but at the end of the day, uh, that is not as important to them as their families. Uh, so I, I, there's a quote that I like to throw out there, whether or not it's relevant here or not, but I like to throw it out. Uh, people don't care how much you know, but they need to know how much you care. And, and it's true. And there's other versions of that. But it's bottom line is that people don't care about what you know. They care about if you care about them. So it's important for you to provide some level of training, even if it's just a little e-brochure that they can download and talk to their kids about. Um, provide family-based training around password vaults, credit freezes, social network training, and social engineering training. Uh, these topics can be huge wins for you in your security program if you can provide these. And they don't have to be complex. Basic things, again, three bullets is really what people operate on a lot, is that if you can have three main points up to something, no more than five, people will pay attention to it. And if you provide it, they'll use it. Again, you, they may only use 1%, but 1% is better than no percent, right? And that's that's good English there, no percent. Uh, cyber security training for schools, giving back to the community. Now, if you as a security professional are probably listening to this, um, you can provide this back to the schools. The schools are they're they're looking for this kind of information. Um, it, it basically go to your school provide training courses for your school on how on cybersecurity. And you can put on webinars, you can talk to parents. I've done both, all of those things. They're really good things to help your communities and to help build uh, 
camaraderie with around the families and the community. Uh, the other thing is talk to the school leadership around cybersecurity. They don't usually get it. Um, and so that's what you need to do to help build your brand. Uh, education for kids, it provides knowledge for the next generation of cybersecurity professionals. I highly recommend that if you can do something like that, that's really cool. The challenge I've run into is that they want you to put together a whole program and then they want you to teach it. I got a full-time job, I can't teach it. But you can put together stuff for the teachers and then provide some training for the teachers for the teachers to actually educate the kids on. Um, that's a really good resource. And I highly recommend, I mean, with all these cybersecurity people that are needed, people are learning. Well, if you're learning, why not use that learning that you're, you're, you're garnering, okay, big word, uh, and turn around and be able to teach other people. Because I'll tell you this, you don't know the information until you start to teach it. That's when you really know it. And then, or you highlight the fact that you really don't know it. And then you go, I don't, this guy doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. Um, or gal. Uh, so that's probably what you're all thinking about my podcast, but I do know it. At least if anything, I will baffle you with something. Yes. Um, you also count it for CPE credits. If you are working on your CISSP or on any other security program, you will do this and you can create CPE or continuing professional education tr credits. Uh, ISC Squared's got this as well. Now, ISC Squared, that's the certifying body for the CISSP. Uh, they actually have a site called safeandsecureonline.org. Uh, that's a great place for you to be able to go and talks about what kind of products you can give to students and to schools. So it's really cool. Um, the other thing is fulfillment. It's a really good idea. Uh, I, I said before, I've done it numerous times. It's a great way to help people. And when it comes to cyber stuff, they don't know it. And anybody who has that that mantra and has that capability, they're got, they're just want it. They want that information. Um, so it's it's important to do, especially if you're a security person, to give back to the community. And it's a good way you can do that. All right, so here's some of the references from both. Uh, I used the ISC squared CISSP training manual because some of the con content that was in here uh, was directly out of my CISSP course, uh, but also some other stuff that I put in through years of experience and, and also safe and secure online dot org. All right, great references and great books and great content in that if you go to isc squared org. All right, this is all I have for cyber awareness training. Again, this is the ongoing stuff that I have available as a CISSP supplement training. Uh, it's available for people who subscribe to reduce cyber risk. Uh, so go on there and sign up. You can get on my email list. And by doing so, uh, you will get access to some of the free content that I have, but also the bonus content that I've only prov provide for people that are on my email distribution distribution list. Um, and it's it's awesome stuff. And there'll be a lot of stuff that may come available for the, the general public, especially in these CISSP supplements that'll be available. But if you're on my distribution list, you will get access to all of my supplemental stuff, not just the stuff that's on my website. So we'll give you access to everything. So go to Reduce Cyber Risk. Uh, you can There's air, multiple areas you can sign up for that you can get access to my email list and then sign up and get on the distribution list. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, my name is Sean Gerber with Reduce Cyber Risk and uh, hope you enjoyed this training. Have a great day. Catch you on the flip side. See ya.